Well, welcome everybody to our advanced access webinar on maintaining your roofs and, and learn a, a lot about the technology that's out there today. I tell people that we're a technology company that just happens to do roofing and we're gonna prove that to you today. So again, my name is Rob Corn Aarons. I'm the founder. I grew up in Long Island next to a family that owned a roofing company. I've done roofing since I was a teenager through college. Uh, I, I got hired to open a branch in Atlanta, Georgia when I was 21 years old, moved to South Florida in 1982, and then started uh, advanced roofing with a $15,000 loan from my dad, bought one pickup truck, and built it up on doing what we say we're going to do, doing quality work and, and uh, just taking care of the customer and being advanced, whether it's the systems we do and, um, or, or this, the uh, total envelope, including air conditioning, lightning protection, repairs and maintenance, coatings, roof asset management. We bought an electrical company last year. I run it with a, a, my two twin boys, Kevin and Mike, and the picture back up, Kevin, one second. We can show them. Um, the family photo there on the on the bottom, you see uh, myself and Kevin to the left of me, Mike and my grandson, Mac. And we're really a big family company because all our associates we consider family and that's our core values today. So um, I'd like to uh, talk a, a little bit about uh, Kevin Cornerans, who's gonna be doing most of this advanced access. He's been in the, around the, roofing industry, obviously, for uh, his entire life. He got his undergrad at FSU and then went on to U of M for his master's in IT, marketing, and international business, and graduated in 2005, where he came into the business. He's uh, responsible for overseeing operations management, all phases of the business. And then in 2016, Kevin turned his passion for the business and its people towards a spearheaded an initiative to implement an apprenticeship training program it's in its fourth year. I'm very proud to say we shared it all over the state now. We now are up in Tampa, Orlando. The National Roofing Contractors Association wants to use it as the, a, a good backbone to what they're developing. So I'm going to introduce Kevin and he's going to take it from here and enjoy your afternoon. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, before we go ahead and get started, I want to get a, a little feedback from the, uh, the audience. Uh, how do you prefer to contact your roofing contractor? You'll see at the bottom of your screen a little polling question if it didn't pop up. Uh, currently, you know, if you had your choice, what would you do? Uh, phone, email, website, yellow pages? Take a quick little survey here. It just gives us some good feedback too on how we could uh, serve our clients' needs in the future. We got some responses for the yellow pages. Um, it's a surprise. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen one of those in a while, but um, so looks like it's a it's a mix. Number one is a phone. Uh, second up is email, and then other ones the website. So we do have all methods to for our customers to contact us. Uh, we appreciate all the customers joining us today and any new clients as well. So uh, you could always call us. We have one eight hundred numbers. We have backup numbers, uh, and email is the best way as well because it gets to multiple people to get you service quickly. But today we're going to talk a little bit about advanced access, uh, the technology Rob preference on how it could help you and manage your roof assets, plus communication tools between us and you to help uh, make sure we meet your expectations. Um, so today we'll be going over advanced access and overview, a uh, high level, uh, what it could do for you. Uh, we'll talk about budgeting. We, we touched on it a month ago with Clis Clint Sockman on asset management and budgeting. So we're going to dive into deep into that as well as some advanced reporting, exporting to Excel, how to request service, and then some more additional mobile capabilities. First though, I wanna play a quick little video that will go over a high level of the software and then we'll dig into the weeds. This is Nicole. She is a property manager for 20, 20 commercial, commercial buildings, buildings in the area. area. But Nicole is in over her head, literally, with roofing issues. She's spending most of her time coordinating maintenance and repairs, analyzing reports, and budgeting for future projects, all while frantically searching for her roof's important documents when issues arise. And to complicate matters, all of Nicole's properties have different roof systems and life cycles, making routine asset management nearly impossible. 
Nicole was feeling frustrated and overwhelmed, trying to manage all of her roofs using different paper forms and spreadsheets, when she heard about the Advanced Access Roof Asset Management Portal from Advanced Roofing, Inc. In business since 1983, Advanced Roofing, Inc. is ranked as the number one commercial roofing company in Florida by Roofing Contractor Magazine and specializes in roof replacements, repairs, and maintenance services for occupied buildings in Florida. Advanced Roofing implemented the Advanced Access Roof Asset Management Portal to help its customers achieve the maximum life cycle from their roofing assets through preventative maintenance, while feeling safe and secure by having complete control over their roofs 24-7, 365 days a year. From any internet-ready device, Nicole can now view all of her roof's information in one location, dispatch service with the click of a button, track work orders in real time, see photos from repairs, view warranty documents, and build custom reports for budgeting. Everything she needs is uploaded to her customer portal seamlessly and can be viewed from anywhere, anytime, even from the beach. With advanced access, Nicole can now streamline her roofing projects for good, allowing her to concentrate on what matters most, ensuring a safe environment for her tenants and saving money for her properties. So, if you're a building owner or property manager with multiple buildings to care for, don't get overwhelmed. Get advanced access. So I like that video because I feel like it gives a very high level of the different capabilities. Some of our clients use this software just to let us know about leaks. Some use it for the asset management side. So we'll be touching each of those topics today. Um, so first up is, is how do you get to the software, right? Your existing client, this is the first time you're hearing of this. Why wasn't I told of this before? So uh, to get to it, uh, you go to our website. It's the easiest way, advancedroofing.com. And at the top, you have the client portal. Uh, we also... You know, after this presentation, we could set you up with a one-on-one -on -one training where we can get you login credentials as well as bookmark it on your phone or your, your desktop as well. So you don't have to always remember going to the advancedroofing.com website. But once you do, you click the client portal and then you're, you're into the portal. So first, before we dive into the portal, it's a little bit uh, software, so you have to get used to different softwares, right? I got used to using Microsoft Teams today versus Zoom, and it was slightly different. So I want to give this little overview. When you log in, we have three tiers set up for clients. The first is the first tier, so it's going to be a company level. Let's use an example for Publix. Publix is the, the company or the client. The second tier would be property. So you have a property in Miami, Orlando, Tampa. That would be at a property level. And then the third tier is section. So you might have a shopping plaza with Publix in it. There's different roof sections that were roofed at different times, uh, different solutions as well for different clients. So this is how we operate our software. Uh, so from a company level to a property level to a section level. Next up, once you're in the system live, uh, this is where you'd log in. You'd see your logo right here, and then you see all your properties. So for this example, uh, we're in here as, as the client, and then you have all your different properties listed here. You'd have the locations, so the cities, um, the square footage for those buildings, as well as the grades. So if we've gone out there and done an inspection on your roof, we'll give it a grade, and I'll dive into the grades a little bit later. But once you get in as a company level, you have different options. You could navigate to your sites, which you're at right now. You could see your service dispatch options. So these are all the tickets and see the status of those and then work in the budget matrix model. And I'll dig into a little bit more of those in the future. Uh, at the same time, when you log into your home page, you got this big red button. This is your, your, your home saver. So this is where you wanna click and this is where you can notify us very quickly if you have a leak or need any other service. And I'm gonna dive into that. You're gonna see this almost on every single page. Up here, if you're a property management firm or you have multiple employees that are gonna to need to use a site and you have one admin, there is a, a user admin feature. We're not gonna dive into it today, but if you want, we can set up a, a training later on. Uh, this report icon we'll be going into a little bit later. This is where you can export your data to Excel. And then you have some other contact information where you can just email us directly from the website or you could print out some of this information. Um, again, I mentioned uh, we're still in the company level and here's all the different properties. Uh, that you could click into. So the next step would be clicking into the one of the properties. So let's say we want to click into one of the properties. From there, you'll see this is the property, right? We were just at the client level with all the properties, but now that we clicked into the property, we see this one property. 
and it has four different roof sections. So that was the third tier. We're still in tier two though. So when you're in the property level, the different options that you have are the roof section. So we like working with our clients, naming the roof sections, what makes sense to them, because it might not always uh, make sense to us. So this is warehouse, office, shipping, and canopy. Again, for these different roof sections, we'll outline the square footage, the estimated install date, if we don't have it, if we weren't the roofing contractor, and that grade that I mentioned before. From there as well, you're going to see uh, the service dispatch icon. Again, this is where you could let us know about leak notifications. You have these same icons up here, so try to keep it consistent for you. And then there's this download PDF item. So a lot of you as existing clients already know, um, should already realize uh, this report, right? This is usually what might be printed and handed to you. Um, or might be emailed over in a hard PDF file. It's not really that, it's, it's very informative, right? but it's not always uh, as intuitive or provide you asset management. So today what we're gonna continue walking through is how this static document is very dynamic in advanced access. So uh, we're gonna be diving into that right now. So that's what the download PDF. So let's say you're, you're not all about this technology and you just wanna get your PDFs, that's a, an option too if you get access to your portal. Uh, next up, we have a little bit of poll. So the next poll is, do you know where your roof warranty documents are? We're gonna give about 20 seconds. Uh, again, the polling is at the bottom of your screen. It should be blinking. So uh, one of the, the best benchmark and for asset manager is knowing where your different uh, documents should be. And Julian later on is gonna walk us through what those documents are and how to keep them. So it looks like it's a, it's a mix, 50-50 uh, almost on where the warranty documents are. So with this uh, advanced access, which is a free solution for our clients, um, right here, if we're on the property level, uh, we upload all the different documents that you would need for your roof asset. So right here, this was a roof we had done. So you could see there the installer and the manufacturer warranty is uploaded already for you, as well as any of our time and material agreement, any other previous proposal. So anything with that roof that you have to manage if you're a property manager and you have to hand it off to another property manager because you're getting reassigned, all that information related to that roof is uploaded for you. So we talked about two tiers already. So the company level, at, uh, we said the public, so you know, the client level, tier two is the property. Now we're diving into tier three, which is the section. So before we had four sections here now, so now we're just specifically in the one section, section one. So when you're in the one section, you have different options down here on your tab in your portal. One is composition. This is where you're gonna see core cuts to determine the insulation, the, the water, and what the roof is made of if we don't have that information in the decking. Uh, from there, you're gonna see observations, uh, condition summary, and then recommendations for that roof too. And I'm gonna go live a little later and then I'll walk you through those. Uh, before I do that though, we are very interactive here today. How do you currently budget for your roof? So we have a few options here. You have experience, work with a consultant, or what kind of budget, right? You throw in a monkey, a dart, a board. Uh, a work with a consultant is a very smart strategy. Uh, we work with many consultants uh, to solve your, your roofing needs. And we also are approved by most major manufacturers to come up with different solutions that might be unique for your building. So when we work through budgeting, uh, there's a lot of questions we have to ask and, and Julian's gonna walk us through those first, but I wanna show you how this software works from a high level. And then Julian's gonna walk through on how we get to those numbers. Um, so. I showed you the PDF report um, of what you normally get. Uh, and so this is an inspection report from the sample that's also loaded into advanced access. So when you call us and say, hey, can you come inspect my building? I wanna know what's going on. I haven't been up there in two years. Um, this is where we come together and we go through this section and we highlight <clears throat> any of the install date, any grades. And so when we go out there, the first step is to realize what kind of condition the roof is in. A, it would be excellent, right? Uh, it has 10 plus years left. Uh, B, eight to 10 years. C, five to seven, or D or F. D or F is the condition where we really try to start working together because in the next two years, it's gonna be paramount 
that you've had budgeted enough money to replace your roof. And this is where we work with our service and production team to make sure it's the right solution for your budget and building. Um, I'm just going to ask anyone to go on mute. Uh, if, if they're not on mute already, I'm getting some feedback. Um, but so the first step the inspector does when we're out there is, is diagnosing the, the life expectancy of that roof. And sometimes that, that comes with experience. While we're also out there, we diagnose any remedial or emergency items on the roof. Um, emergency items are items that need to be fixed immediately. Uh, otherwise, they're going to cause uh, damage to inside the building. They're going to cause leaks or further uh, shorten the life of the roof. Um, remedial items, remedial items, are these are the items that should probably be fixed in the next 20, 12 to 24 months. These are the items that are going to make your roof last 30 years. Um, we don't buy a car and we don't get oil changes for nothing, right? And we don't change the brake pads. Your roof is, is the same way. If you want it to last that 20 to 30 years when you budget for it, you wanna make sure you take care of these remedial items. So our roof experts, they come out there, they diagnose the emergency and the remedial items. Some of the remedial items as well would be looking at the different safety items and making sure you're up to code as far as OSHA examples as well. Uh, as we work through that process, uh, our takeoff technician on the roof, we then come up with this budgeting sample. And so this is just showing one section of that roof. And so we'll work together coming up with the, these are your emergency items, the items that need to be taken care of immediately, the remedial items, and then a replacement um, budget for that roof. And, and a lot of times that's a square foot pricing best, and it's an estimate that you could use to budget uh, for financial reasons. Um, as we walk through all the different roof sections, we're back at this property with the four different roof sections. So uh, as we're working through this system together, you see the different roof sections. So we had the warehouse, office, shipping, and canopy. And then we have the emergency remedial and replacement options that you have. And so you could also see that these roofs are uh, I, different, right? You can tell that just from the color um, <clears throat> of the membrane. So as we walk through it, we don't know exactly who your high tenant is or what building's most important to you. So right here, we have numbers def next to each section <clears throat> on which areas are more important to you. So we, we walk together, work together to put a number of priorities. And I'll walk through later in the reporting section on why that's important that we do that. Um, as we move along, time for a quick poll. So as we try to figure out in this whole budgeting process, right, a roof asset management plan, you're really trying to budget out your roof, especially with COVID. Do I do a coating? Do I do a re-roof? So there's a, a poll that just popped up. Uh, Florida code is very stringent, the most strict in the United States, uh, according with Miami-Dade and the hurricanes that, that are coming. We're already a third into the third day of June, the fourth day of June. So according to Florida code, up to what percentage of a commercial roof may be repaired before a roof replacement is required? So a lot of, uh, of our clients aren't educated on this because they don't understand why you know, a certain section can't be just be replaced. But according to Florida code, it's, it's 25% that you'd need to budget for a re-roof replacement. Um, I am now gonna go hand over the presentation to Julian Olarte, our Miami branch manager, to walk you through when we're walking through on these questions on when we're budgeting asset management in using the software, on why it's important to work together to come up with a plan if we're going to repair, do some of those remedial items, or if we're going to do a coating, or if we're going to do a replacement. So, Julian, if you could take over the presentation, the mic's yours. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, so, going deeper into the budget part, when we inspect a roof, what are the two questions that we ask ourselves? So, is this roof repairable, or does it need to be replaced? So, we look at the what roof type do you have? What's the roof condition that you have? What's the service history that has been done on your roof? How much money have you spent on that roof? Are the deficiencies or the leaks that you have been repaired located in one single point or are they, are they distributed along all the roof which would indicate us that there's some uh, major issue going if you have leaks all, all over the place? Uh, have you been maintaining the roof um, with an approved contractor? Uh, how is the building, uh, the condition of the roof affecting the uh, business operation? It's not the same having a leak on a food processing plant compared to a leak 
on a warehouse, an industrial warehouse, where the goods, if they get that wet, then it is not going to be as serious as if you have a leak on a food processing plant. Um, what are they, the, the ownership needs? I mean, is this building going to be uh, owned long term or is it going to be short term? Is the building going to be demolished in the short term or is it going to change the use of the building that are going to affect the, the roofing design? So all these questions, once we ask ourselves these questions, we could have uh, different answers. And we could have four different scenarios. The first one would be when your roof is in good shape and it's on a maintainable condition. Uh, on that case, we would give you a, a maintenance program and a maintenance plans to make sure that your roof performs as expected. Uh, the other uh, situation would be that your roof must be repaired to bring it up to a maintainable condition. In that case, we would give you, as Kevin was saying, a plan with deficiencies that are either emergency or remedial. Uh, emergency being uh, items that have to be addressed immediately because they are causing leaks or remedial if they can potentially cause a leak in the future. So we would bring up a plan with a budget uh, to be invested on, invested on the roof. If, uh, um, if the repairs are not an option, we could also explore assuming that the roof is in good shape, the substrate is dry and the roof is attached to the structure. We could also explore the option of restoring the roof with, with coatings. But if neither of those options are available and then you need to replace, we could budget um, what would be the best choice uh, to replace your roof. So how to, how to understand uh, the cost, the life cycle cost of your building? Um, some key inputs that we have is the initial cost of installation. And usually uh, building owners shouldn't be going for the lowest bidder, but instead, the, what would be the lower cost during the life cycle of my roof, which is a total difference. Sometimes the, the, the lowest bidder is going to be long-term, is going to be the, the highest cost that you have. What's the life expectancy that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have from my roof, which is different from the warranty. Some roofs, you could have a 20 year uh, NDL warranty, but if you have been neglected maintenance on your roof, that roof can last only 10 years. And if you have a 20 year and you have been very proactive doing maintenance, you could have a 30 year roof. So different uh, scenarios. Uh, what would be my maintenance cost on that roof? Am I going to install an energy saving uh, uh, roof that is going to uh, create reflectivity that is going to save me cost on, on HVAC? So all these items, you have to keep them into consideration when, when starting the life, the real cost of when installing a roof. So a roof has basically four stages. The first one will be the initial cost of installation. Um, by selecting the right contractor, uh, the right manufacturer, the right materials, most likely you are going to ensure that the roof is going to last longer. Uh, once you uh, pass this stage one, uh, it's a must that you um, enroll into a maintenance program. Uh, so you can guarantee that the roof is going to perform as designed and as expected. Uh, very important on maintenance, roofs that have been uh, neglected in these uh, 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 maintenance programs, they can last 13 years in average compared to roofs that have been proactively uh, maintained, could last up to 21st years. These are averages in the industry. On, the, on another hand, if you've been uh, um, reacting to leaks, that's going to cost you three to four more times compared to if you have a proper maintenance program in place and you have a budget separated on a yearly basis to invest on, 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 on your roof. Uh, also very important, a big number, 80% of the roofs uh, fail prematurely, uh, either because they were installed by a, a, a contractor that didn't have the, the proper uh, uh, workmanship or because the roof was neglected and maintenance. So big number. Uh, putting some money on the maintenance is going to create a lot of benefit for you. Uh, once you have gone this stage and assuming that you have been taking uh, proper care of your roof, you can, uh, if the roof is reaching its useful life, uh, and if it's a good substrate, good roof, uh, well maintained during its useful life, then you can explore coding options. And then you would have the final cost when you have to replace it. Some cheat sheet 
uh, uh, we usually go roof repairs, $150 per hour. Roof coatings, you could find between three and five. Uh, tear off, it's going to depend on the conditions, height of the building, but we are, uh, for budget purposes, we assume between nine and 25. Uh, and you start building up if you have to add taper or if you have to uh, adjust any mechanical or any upgrading the electrical, elect, uh, lighting protection as well, and stock so you waterproof the, the top envelope of your roofs that could go one to four dollars per square feet. So those are budget numbers that we use to guide you when, when uh, planning your expenses. Going back to Kevin. Awesome, thank you Julian. And so we wanted to cover those numbers because, you know, we're going through this presentation in, in an hour for a lunch and learn, but wanted to walk you through, there's a lot that goes into asset management and, and goes into the numbers that you're seeing on the screen. So even though the, the presentation seems quick, there's a lot of uh, tribal knowledge and experience that goes into helping our clients work on numbers and budgets for them. And so one of that ways, so once we, you work with one of our experts, uh, we, you go into the reporting module of advanced access. Um, so we're going back, we're diving back into the software. We're at the client level, so that tier one level. And we mentioned the little reporting icon before, the Excel document right here that's highlighted in red. You would click that, and once you do that, that brings you into the reporting module. Uh, from here, you can see multiple areas of the software. The first one is the expense repair inventory. These are those remedial and emergency deficiencies that our experts have diagnosed on your roof. And so you could see it for your whole property level or your whole client, or you could see it by property as well. So if this is an example for, for a client, these are all their properties in the different sections. And so they've, we worked on priorities before, right? What's a priority six for our clients? Uh, that's why we have to work together because not it might be a priority for us, but you might say it's a higher tenant and we need to focus on it. And if you only have a li limited budget, for example, for COVID or for whatever reason, um, this is where we could work together. So these are the expense items that need to be planned and budgeted for as far as repairs. Uh, the next tab here, you see the capital project budget. These are the numbers where, you know, Julian was just mentioning those, those square foot pricing uh, where we could budget for either uh, a coating or a re-roof option. And so we work together uh, based on the priority plus the projected replacement. So if we knew it was a D and you need to replace that roof in two years, uh, we would put that out to 2022 as well with the expense here. And that, and we work through each of your properties and each of your sections. So that way you could come up with a two, three year, four year, five year budgeting plan for all your properties. Um, from there, the his, I know, some of our clients ask for this as well to annualize what they've spent on that property or that tenant space. Uh, so all the repair history for those properties as well, filtered down by date range, can be pulled as well. You could also dig into the invoice as well. So if you needed copies of the invoice for whatever reason to see what was done, or if it was HVAC or another trade related, you could pull that invoice down here as well. Um, that's great, that's in our system, right? But what happens um, if you decide, uh, if, you know, unfortunately you have to part ways with advanced roofing. We never try to lose clients, but it's all exportable to a spreadsheet. Uh, you know, Excel is my favorite uh, software piece. Uh, you get all this information into one document, uh, the roof age, the priority, the square footage, all in one document. And I know a lot of clients have building asset management systems or their CFO, or their supervisor wants to see data a certain way, that's probably not the same way that's in our system. You could export this into Excel uh, and do whatever you want with it and import it into your own software. Um, any questions? Uh, I know uh, there is a Q&A section as well in the chat. So if there's any questions on the exporting or any of the reporting functionality, uh, please type it in the chat box and then we'll address it as we go along. Um, Next. Hey Kevin, we actually did have a question. We had a question about the priorities, like what's a six versus a one? Sure, so uh, that's actually client specific. So if uh, either six is highest or one is highest. So some of our clients like to say that uh, one is, is the least important and six is the highest important and some like to look at it the other way. So uh, it's, it's up to our clients' uh, expectations on what they would like to see. So excellent question. Um, 
So next, uh, how, you know, we start off the presentation with how do you want to contact your roofing contractor? It was a mix between phone and email. Uh, we want to present another way. It's via uh, either this desktop solution or via your cell phone and an app. I'm going to show you how within four clicks you could request a leak order and not have to look up a phone number to call or any history on a property. So, but first, before I do that, I want to walk through uh, the technology to hold us accountable. So we, you know, I know we know clients have high expectations. And so just like FedEx and UPS, we expect our Amazon deliveries to come within two days. Uh, we also track from when the call comes in to when it's actually uh, resolved and then confirmed from management. So the ticket, as we walk through, when you dispatch a ticket, call it in, email it in, it goes into a dispatch status. From there, it gets scheduled with a scheduler to a arrival ETA, and that's where we put a, a, as estimated time of arrival on our dispatch board. From there, it's in progress where the technician actually gets to the site. They use this app real time, so you could get <clears throat> notifications right when they show up in progress. From there, once they finish, it goes to resolved. And then management does a QC, QA check on that ticket, and then they confirm the ticket before it gets invoiced and sent over to you. Uh, what this system allows you to do, it allows you to see this all in real time, plus it allows you to manage email alerts. So for example, if you're a property manager and you wanna know when they arrive on site, because you have to let the tenant know, you could just get in progress alerts. Or if you really don't care about when they go, that you just wanna know when they're done, you would just sign up for resolved alerts. So the system's dynamic into giving, or if you want all of them, we could overload you with a lot of emails and you could get all of them as well. So I don't highly recommend that, but some clients use it that way as well. Um, so how do we request service? Uh, so there's two ways that you could do it electronically. One is through this desktop app that I've been walking you through advanced access. That's through your Chrome browser uh, from your desktop. Again, we talked about that little red button with the cross. Um, this here, we're on the property level. Uh, you click the service dispatch button. So this red button here. Once you do that, it navigates you to this next screen. It's going to ask you, since we were in the property, which section is the leak in? So one, it's in the warehouse. Two, who's the site contact? So we upload all your facility managers to our systems as well. What is the priority? And then any notes. Notes always help. You know, this one says leak in northwest corner of the warehouse. It helps our technicians uh, on site find the leak quicker and solve the issue. Uh, once you do all that, you hit send dispatch. Uh, once you hit send dispatch, you're gonna get a little notification that it has been sent to your contractor, which is us, that we've been notified. That's kind of your little go-to. You also, uh, if you want, you could set up an alert to get an email confirmation on that as well. Um, another nice feature of using the, the desktop app from your computer instead of calling or emailing in, all those remedial and emergency items that we found on your roof during an inspection are here. So here's a different example. So this is the same warehouse, but you could see we were on this roof before when we did an inspection. And these were the other items that should have been done on that roof. Yeah, maybe you didn't have a budget at that time or you got all the reports and now it's three months later right before rainy season or it just started raining, right? This past two weeks has been a lot of rain coming through and you're like, oh yeah, we should have got these done. The same time you call on that lead ticket, you could also let us know that you want to get these efficiencies done as well. Um, so now once you have all this repair history and these leak histories, uh, we talked about the one reporting tool where you could export any uh, work orders that had been done on your properties. But another live dynamic tool, when you're on the client level, you have your service dispatch tab here. Uh, when you're in your, your portal, you click the service dispatch tab and you see all the different tickets that have had happened. You could filter it by priority, status, uh, location. So all your tickets, everything you could see real time, it really provides transparency on when you dispatch it to when we showed up to when we confirmed it and when we invoiced it. From this screen as well, you could get a copy of the invoice by clicking the invoice date and it pops up the invoice that you normally get electronically. Uh, another time for a quick little poll. Uh, failure to perform and document annual roof maintenance may void your in contractor or manufacturer warranty. So most manufacturers uh, have warranty uh, language that requires some kind of visual inspection or roof maintenance to maintain their manufacturer warranty. 
Normally a contractor warranty that's uh, two or five years uh, requires due diligence, but usually does not require a maintenance program, but it's highly recommended. Just like if you buy a new car, you're not gonna go two years before you have someone look at it. So it's highly recommended that you start a PM program from day one. Now I'm gonna have Julian talk a little bit about what that maintenance program would look like and the best practice you should be doing to get the most life out of your roof. Julian? Thank you, Kevin. So as Kevin was saying, this system would help us creating a detailed roof file. Uh, we will be able to put into the cloud any roof drawing, any design, any uh, roof plan that uh, we had on in the initial um, uh, construction of the roof. Then you would have some pictures of in progress uh, um, construction of the roof, uh, inspection record from municipalities or from uh, manufacturers, any warranty document associated when uh, the roof was done. And then once you start the maintenance program, you would have all the inspections, inspection reports either on a, a yearly basis or twice a year, uh, photos of any previous repair, location of the repair with apartment unit or bay that we have. So everything is going to be documented uh, um, on the cloud and it will be uh, easily accessible to you. Uh, so we would create this file with advanced access and it will uh, save you uh, uh, tons of uh, uh, issues or problems if a problem arises. Um, very important as well, you would have a log on, 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 on the roof so you can have accountability of whoever goes to the roof. So all these things help you better manage your uh, uh, asset. Awesome, thank you, Julian. And again, you know, those documents would be uploaded uh, on the property level. So again, in your portal, when you're in a specific property, you have a whole documents tab that you would see a uh, warranty files or any other related documents uh, that would be advisable in the cloud for you in one location. Um, so next, uh, you know, how do you get access to advanced access and really get the full capabilities? It would be getting a, a free inspection. So us walking your roof, uh, diagnosing any of those remedial emergency items, and then working together uh, to come up with a plan on a, a budget. So the first step would be contacting uh, someone on our service team or your account manager to get a, a free inspection on your roof. I want to highlight, uh, I talked about how to dispatch a ticket via your desktop, but a lot of us don't always have uh, the availability to be behind a computer 24 seven in this day and world. So we also have uh, mobile capabilities for any kind of smartphone, uh, be it Android, Apple, uh, if Microsoft is still around, but you have, uh, it's a, a website. So it's a dynamic website. So it's not an app. It doesn't track your location. It doesn't track anything. It's literally a website like CNN.com. Uh, so that you don't have to worry about any personal <clears throat> information being compromised. Um, we just put a shortcut to our website, a mobile website. And so what does that look like? So it looks like similar to what you see on the desktop, but it's a little bit more simpler. So once you log in, you see all your properties. So since your, your client information is already stored on your, your phone, you would see all your properties here again. So you have your properties, the location, the city, and the condition of that roof. So let's say we click into one of the properties, you'd see that same aerial photo and the section right there. And let's say you have a leak going on with all this rain going on these past weeks, you click that button, there it is again, the service dispatch button. Once you click that button, it comes to that same set of questions that it asked you earlier. <clears throat> the section, the site contact, the priority, and then any notes. From there, you hit send dispatch and you created a ticket. So in four clicks, you've created a ticket without looking up a phone number, without calling, without going on hold, and that automatically goes to our whole service team. So I'm hoping uh, in the future when we do another poll, uh, some of you uh, say you use advanced access to create your leak tickets and let us know, but we are available via phone and email as well. Uh, the other nice feature of the mobile, let's say you're a property manager or facility manager and you're out at multiple facilities, you see this building got a D, right? Well, besides clicking the service dispatch button, if we've been out there and inspected it, you'll have this PDF button, which is that same report, that static report that we talked about earlier that you usually get currently via email, all there, and that would download as a PDF to your phone. So you could pull it up straight from your phone as well. And you could walk through it <clears throat> if you have an iPad on site. So you could get that information rather quickly from your phone. 
Um, so the key takeaways, <clears throat> you know, requesting service uh, should be simpler, authorizing repairs that you might not have thought of when you have new leaks, uh, using the budgeting and coming up with a two and five year roof asset management plan so you can budget out and get financing for your roof if needed, and then using the reporting capabilities. I did want to dive uh, into if anyone wants, you know, we could go get crazy. If anyone wants to go directly into their system right now to see how it would look for them, I could dive into it. Uh, if we don't have any volunteers, I do have one up, um, Alachua County. It's one of a newer ones. So this is where we're live in the system right now is from a back end user. So if Alachua County logged into their portal, these are the different properties that they have. And this is where at that client level again. So let's say they want to look up, well, what's going at the courthouse? Uh, there's some, some things going on at the courthouse. And so they want to look what's going on. So here's there. So Courthouses are usually complex. Um, they're not really great, uh, easier roof uh, solutions, but that's why they have advanced roofing. So you have these seven different roof sections. Uh, they didn't provide us names, so it just defaults section one to seven. But again, we could name those to your fire layout, your building code layout, whatever you want us to name those. Those are pretty easy to rename. Again, the estimated install date and the rating for each of those roof sections. You could also see by the color of the membranes here that they're different conditions and different life cycles. And so if we just dig into uh, one of them, um, let's just dig into section one here. You're gonna see exactly uh, the core cut. So this is uh, diagnosing uh, what the, the roof is made of, as well as if there's any moisture in the roof. Any observations that we walked through before, north, south, west, or east, uh, a condition summary. So these are those remedial as well as emergency items that this client needs to get done. So they could quickly see if you were the uh, facility manager for Alachua County, what needs to get done in this roof section right here in the pricing for that options. And then any final recommendations that they have. So it really takes that PDF report that you normally get uh, that I showed you, because all that information is in this PDF report now, right? But it's a little, it's, it's a very long document. One is the feedback we get. And it's, so it's not as dynamic. So what the portal does is it enables us to work together and kind of come up with a game plan on, on what you want to get per, per roof section or per property. Um, again, you had your reports up here. <clears throat> uh, so I don't know if there's any questions that came in, Jess. Uh, I just want to kind of show you what it would look like in live. We had some screenshots. Uh, again, uh, the best thing would be to reach out to us. We could set up a one-to-one -one if it's it's if it's a, all of your employees or team members, or if it's just a one-on-one -on -one with the building owner. We'd love to walk you through the technology and show you your property and how uh, we could work together. Thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, we value our, our relationships together. I uh, look forward to working together on some asset management plans. Hey, Kevin. So we do have a couple questions. Hopefully everyone stays safe and dry. Uh, make sure you check that radar and get an umbrella. If you don't have an advanced roofing umbrella yet or your ponchos, we have some. So reach out to us and we'll get you some ponchos mailed. Uh, so have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.